You're listening to the Senior Bulletin Podcast with Darren Marlowe, the podcast where we discuss issues that matter to seniors. Hello, and thanks for joining me on this episode of the Senior Bulletin, where we discuss issues and topics that matter to seniors. My name is Darren, and I'm your host. So there's many people who struggle every day dealing with various types of disabilities. And my guest today She struggled with epilepsy for years. Now she's on a mission to transform the health of millions worldwide. She's the author of The Complete Guide to Natural Healing and Natural Remedies for Common Conditions, along with 20 other published books. And she's also the founder of TheCompleteHerbalGuide.com. And she's here today to share with us a natural approach to healing the body and maintaining optimal health using herbal supplements, vitamins, minerals, fruits, vegetables, and alternative medicine. Please welcome Stacy Chilemi to the show. Good morning, Stacy, and welcome to the Senior Bulletin. Hello, and thank you so much for having me. You're welcome. So, Stacy, you're on a mission to transform the health of millions worldwide. Tell us about your mission. You know, I have um, had epilepsy since I was five, and I struggled with my own um, uh, invisible uh, disability. And uh, you know, it, it was a, a long and, and uh, a long struggle for me. And you know, as I got older, um, you know, it was harder and harder to cope with it. And I started working. Um, I started in college. I, I was trying to get through college uh, with epilepsy. And it was really um, a, a really with the stress of uh, uh, of the uh, classes and the tests and everything. Um, you know, my seizures started to get uh, worse, and I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to to deal with my epilepsy. And it was a uh, you know, and so one day I decided to write a letter to the Epilepsy uh, Foundation, um, based in uh, Washington. They have a magazine, and I asked them if they could publish my letter. And in that letter, I asked them, how do people cope? With epilepsy, you know, how do they deal with an illness? And you know, to my, uh, I was stunned. But I received at that time three to four hundred letters that came to my house from people all over the United States and Canada, sharing their stories about how they dealt with epilepsy and how they cope with epilepsy. And um, you know, it was very inspiring and helped me realize that I wasn't the only one who struggled with an illness, and I wasn't the only one who was trying to, you know, uh, trying to overcome their illness and try to move on and it was very inspiring and as time went on I started to um, put together a lot of those letters and I created a book called Epilepsy You're Not Alone and the book um, basically I took a lot of the regiments um, that they people were suggesting try this do this and uh, it helped me and uh, and I started you know I put together that book and suddenly um, you know uh, when I, it got published, um, people were writing to me and, and thanking me for writing the book. They said that it had helped them. One person emailed me and told me that they were on the verge of suicide because they couldn't cope with life anymore. You know, one day, you know, th- this person, you know, had a job and, and this person was, you know, working and he was the head of the household and, you know, the next day he was in a motorcycle accident and he hit his head and he ended up with epilepsy and he couldn't work anymore, he couldn't drive, and, you know, he, he didn't know how to cope with life. And, and he, um, you know, at that point he fell into depression and he didn't want to move on. But he said after he read my book, he followed my my advice and, and he uh, he read the encouraging letters from other people. And he, he, uh, he, he created a whole new lifestyle for himself, and he thanked me for that. And it was at that point in my life I realized, you know, how powerful words can be. You know, how so, what, someone just like, like you on the radio, you know, you can share your, your words of inspiration and motivation. And sometimes you don't realize how much of an impact you have on other people's lives. And just the words that you share can inspire somebody to, to change or, and to even change their whole life and to to move on and to give them the encouragement to do things that they never wanted to do before. 
And as this went on, as time went on, um, you know, I started working in uh, New York, and I was working for a big corporation in the city, and um, I had had a seizure, and I fell on the floor. And one of the uh, big executives saw me have a seizure, and I was released from my job at that point. And, uh, you know, I was very depressed myself, but you know what? I I wasn't going to let it get me down. I said, you know what? It's not meant to be. And uh, so I moved on, and I had actually went to Washington. I spoke in front of Congress about um, job discrimination, and I started working for an herbalist. And I worked for this herbalist, and I was actually um, writing and doing a lot of research for him. And these things were, like, amazing. Like, some of the things I was reading about herbs and changing your lifestyle and changing uh, different things in your life can have such an impact on your health. And I started applying a lot of this stuff to myself, and my health just turned around. I went from having nine seizures a month to six to five to four to three to two, and my seizures became controlled. And that's when I realized, wow, you know, my first book, I helped so many people with epilepsy, but, you know, I could help people all around the world just by sharing the knowledge that I have about, you know, lifestyle and motivation and inspiration. All these things are all interrelated. And, you know, I that's how I started my mission. And I started out, you know, with a little blog on Blogger. You remember Blogger? You yeah. Know? And uh, I started with a little website, and it grew from 400 to four, to 500,000. And that's where I am today. What a story. That's a great, awesome story, Stacey. Um, up until your early 30s, uh, you were letting materialism and other unnatural ways of the world rule your life. Right. Uh, mm-hmm. And then in 2011, you had a spiritual awakening. Yes. Tell us, Tell us more about how that affected your life. Well, you know, I was working in the city, and I had gotten out of college, and I was introduced to a, um, you know, a different lifestyle, a different world, and you know, the college, you know, teaches you things, but it doesn't really teach you about, you know, what to what what's out there in the real world, what you're about to experience. And you know, working in the city and working for a big corporation, I, you know, I, you know, I, I really was intrigued by a lot of things and I also was disappointed at the same time where the materialism of everything kind of like spiked my eyes you know I was like wow you know I wanted to be that girl you know who drank martinis Mm -hmm. on a Friday night with her girlfriends and I wanted to have all that you know that great lifestyle and you know and the trendy clothes that you see everyone in, in the city wearing on the Upper East Side you know I wanted all that for myself, but, you know, as time went on and, you know, I started working and I started realizing that, you know, um, materialism, you know, things, you know, can't, those things can't make you happy. If you're truly not happy with yourself, you know, nothing is going to make you happy. It doesn't matter how big your house is or what kind of car you have or, you know, where you are in life. You have to be happy with who you are as a person. And in the city, when I was working there, there were so many people trying to backstab everybody, and everybody was smiling on one side, and on the other side, they were trying to get your job, and they were trying to do things that weren't so nice. And, uh, you know, you didn't really know who your friends were and, and who the real people out there were. And that's, a, that's kind of scary for a person in their, you know, mid-20s and early 30s. And, you know, and, and, you, know you, realize, you have to realize and think for yourself, what is my true passion? What do I really want for myself? Am I happy with who I am? Am I happy, you know, is is the materialistic things going to make me happy? You know, you have to kind of, you know, really kind of plan out your short-term and your long-term goals and think about what you need in life and, and try and just block out the rest of the world and block out all that materialistic stuff and, and think about what you as a person, what you truly need, what's going to make you happy and what's going to give you the things in life that are going to give you the motivation and inspiration to, to live a healthy, happy and productive life. Absolutely. <clears throat> and uh, Stacy, you're, you're a, you're a health and lifestyle reporter um, a columnist, a health host, and also an author. Tell us about some mm-hmm. of the books that you've published. I've written um, over 20 books. I've written uh, books on 
positive thinking. I've written books on uh, natural um, herbs. Um, the Complete Herbal Guide is one of the books I based my website on, and that talks about how different herbs and different vitamins can actually help the body and how you can incorporate that in your lifestyle. And how it and it talks it teaches people you know about each herb and teaches them about you know what they can do and and what you could use it for and the precautions you have to take and so forth. And I've written books um, about uh, you know how to how to you know different ways to improve your life and to if you know I based one book on on different conditions you know um, how to uh, common conditions how to um, treat each common condition with uh, you know, it was called natural remedies for the na- for natural uh, condition for common conditions, and it teaches people how to actually um, uh, you know uh, teaches them about all the different common conditions like diabetes and other things, and and what they can do actually to help them help themselves. And uh, and I also you know I've written um, a lot of books you know um, kind of like in in series. Um, where I, I taught people, you know, how to live uh, a happy lifestyle and how to, you know, how to, how to, you know, how to break down their life so they can actually live a productive life and be happy with themselves. And I've even wrote, wrote books on, you know, purifying water and, you know, and 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 teaching people how to change the things in their home to actually live a, a healthy lifestyle because, you know, people don't realize, but you know, so so many things, you know, so many toxins in our in the food we eat and outside of where we live and, you know, how to actually cleanse our body and cleanse, you know, cleanse the area and environment we live in to help improve the way our body functions. Absolutely. So in, as part of your lifestyle, you live a holistic lifestyle. Um, <clears throat> tell us a little bit about what day-to-day living is like uh, living holistically. You know, I always believe that it's very important when you first wake up in the morning to try to um, meditate or try to relax. And, you know, it, a great way to uh, meditate is to find a, a place in your home where you feel comfortable and what uh, room maybe that you know, feel relaxed in. And to, you know, to relax and close your eyes and to focus on something uh, positive and to you know, to it, breathing is very important to take deep breaths and to stretch the body, to in, encourage the, the a healthy blood flow to, you know, that will help you. Um, it would actually help, you know, with your body, with your, with your muscles, with, with pain, with energy, you know, it, and just taking 15 minutes to, to relax and to think about what your short-term goals of the day and what your long-term goals for today and try to focus and to do all these different things little by little, step by step, um, can actually help, you know, help you on your, on your daily, uh, um, daily, uh, uh, basis, you know, to help you live a, a healthy lifestyle and to try to get a little exercise in the day. You know, sometimes it's very hard. We live in set, such a busy lifestyle. Everyone is on the go, go, go. And, you know, there's so much stress in our lives, you know, to, to focus on how to cope with stress and how to, you know, to how to, um, you know, deal with reducing stress in your life so you deal with it better because 90% of the illnesses in our lives are caused by stress. So really, you know, when stress comes our way, you know, we really have to try to deal with it in a in a healthy, healthy manner, the best we can, you know, and uh, and not let you know our lives, you know, uh, you know, kind of take control of us, and try to focus on, you know, trying to live a focused, healthy, happy lifestyle because we only have one life, and we have to try to make the best of it. So. It's it's pointless to take the the minutes we have and to to use them in an, in an unhealthy and and uh, non positive way. Mm-hmm. So what you're saying more or less is kind of ease into the day, and yeah. as opposed to just jumping out of bed and kind of just hitting it, right? Exactly, and just in the foods we eat too. It's very important, you know. People don't realize we we because everybody's in a rush, rush, you know, mode, and everybody's you know run into the next next thing they have to do. Um, what we put in our bodies too matters, you know. Um, the food we eat, um, you know, uh, there's so many. Um, 
ingredients in a lot of the foods, processed foods, and when you're when you put unhealthy things in your body, your body doesn't know what to do with them, and your so your body just stores them. It's very hard for them to break it down, and it takes a while. So your body stores a lot of stuff, and these toxins stay in your body. And then when the toxins are in your body, your body slows down. Your organ, organs are working double time to try to to try to break the toxins and flush the toxins out of your body. And so then you become sluggish because your body's working so hard. And then you don't feel energetic and you don't feel focused. And, you know, a lot of these, even, you know, a lot of the foods and, the, and impurities in the foods can actually even make you, you know, change your moods and to change, you know, the way you think and, and, and make you sluggish and fatigue. And as we get older, you know, it's hard enough trying to deal with, you know, the, the fatigueness that we feel. We don't feel like we are when we're 20 anymore. You know, we have to try to, you know, do our best to try to make ourselves feel, you know, as energetic as possible, and even with with the the muscle pains and the, everything that we go through, you know, by eating healthy and and taking you know the right um, you know maybe vitamins or or supplements or even drinking a little tea, you know, um, can actually help the body and and help you as a person. Mm-hmm. Now, lately, you've been doing a lot of research, writing, and videos on natural ways to prevent hair loss and Mm -hmm. to promote hair growth for both men and women. Um, Tell us about some of what you've discovered. You know, I had a lot of people coming to me, and a lot of people, especially as they've gotten older, um, you know, usually you see it a lot of it, um, even like in the 40s and 50s, um, people are seeing their hair thin, and they're seeing hair loss. And, you know, a lot of times when you think of hair loss, you think of men, the first thing that comes to your mind. And it's, you know, it's not just men. It's both men and women, you know, that struggle. You'll see, you know, I didn't really realize it until I started doing research, and I started actually focusing focusing and looking and then I realized there are a lot of women out there that are going through hair thinning and it's even harder for a woman because a man can you know they get away with it because it's like it's more socially acceptable you know even though the person in themselves might feel a little insecure about it and might be upset that they're losing their hair society accepts it well you know he's getting older you know but if a woman loses their hair you know people are like oh oh my god you know and it's different you know um it's not socially acceptable in our society. And, you know, a lot of times what it is is, is that we have um, our testosterone converts to DHT, and that's a hormone in our body, and it's a, really a, a big factor behind hair loss. And that DHT is derived from testosterone, and it's in both men and women. People sometimes don't realize that both, both men and women have testosterone in their bodies. And... Um, as time goes on, that um, the testosterone, probably about 10% of it, converts into um, DHT. Um, unfortunately, there's an enzyme called alpha, uh, 5 alpha reductase in our body, and you know that helps to convert the DHT, and that shrinks um, the hair follicles, which causes the hair loss. And it's really, you know, people uh, struggle with hair loss, and uh, but there are ways to block. Uh, DHT, and um, there's actually a natural ways that can actually help, um, you know, block the uh, and 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 block the DHT, so you don't go through the the hair loss, and it can actually promote hair growth. And you know, I've I've come. Um, I was working with hair restoration laboratories, and I was doing a lot of research for them, and I was trying their products, and they have a lot of stuff like um, green tea extract, keratin, um, vitamin C, um, pumpkin seed oil, caffeine, and a lot of this stuff, if you do the research, it is very helpful for hair loss. And I, as I was trying their, their products, it, um, it was my hair was actually getting thicker and longer. And, uh, you know, I, my hair hasn't looked this great in, in over a decade. And I was really excited because I was doing previously all this writing about hair loss to begin with. And then I started um, working with them and doing a lot of research for them. And I was amazed how well their products worked. And, you know, I'm always excited to, like, share it with other people because uh, they have a shampoo, a, a conditioner, and they have ser- a serum – 
to help promote hair growth, and it, it, it works fabulously. And I have all my friends and my family on it because mm-hmm. it, it works so great, you know, because, you know, it's something that we all struggle with as we get older. And, you know, there's so many things out there people don't realize, and people are always, you know, hesitant to try things because it, a lot of stuff is expensive, you know, and a lot of stuff doesn't always work. And, you know, it's not fair for people to spend money when they don't have to, you know. And there's a lot of natural things that you can use, you know, that can actually help, you know, with hair loss. And, you know, biotin is very good, too. That helps to thicken the hair, and it helps with the growth of hair, you know. And uh, we have a lot of things on our, our, our website, too, that they can go on and just read the articles and read about all the different natural supplements and natural things they could do to help with hair loss because it's it's something that's very common in in the United States and around the world and it, and it's something that really you know is very upsetting you know a lot of people you know it's very hard for them you know you know one day you, you know you wake up and there's a clump of hair on your pillow or you're looking on the bottom of your shower drain and all this hair is there and you're like oh my god you know what do I do you know no one wants to see themselves lose their hair mm-hmm. absolutely not and like you said, it's more acceptable for men than it is women. Um, oh, most definitely. Yeah, some men you know have a full head of hair, and then I'm sorry, have a full head of hair, and yet they still shave it all off and go bald. So um, yeah, <laughs> I, <laughs> I had I had a friend. He you know he 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 lost the whole front end of his hair, and then he shaved his head, mm-hmm. but he looked good. You know, with a shaved head. You know, it's not something he really wanted to do, but he didn't want to go. You know, with his whole front you know, missing. And, right. uh, but it was socially acceptable and everybody was like, Oh, you look good. And that was that, you know, try, try having a woman do that. You know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. It wouldn't go too well. <laughs> yeah. Now you mentioned your website, um, the complete herbal com. Tell us more about your site and what we'll find there. You know, I like I was mentioning earlier in our conversation, I had created a what um, uh, I started out with a, a little blog, and we grew it to a, a huge website. A lot of people came on, and what we started doing is we started having a lot of experts write articles, and we started doing a lot of research and we, a lot of um, a lot of articles about how you can actually um, heal your body naturally. Different lifestyle changes. You know, sleep is really important. We talk about about sleep. We talk about every condition you can think of, like depression, diabetes, you know, constipation, cold sores, you know, you name it, it's on there. And uh, we talk about different ways, you know, people easily, you know, heal their bodies, you know, in their own homes by doing certain things or just using certain things. And um, it's all advice. Not everything works for everybody. And you always have to be careful, too, because you know what? If you're taking medication and you're on, let's say, a high cholesterol medication, medication, high blood cr- pressure medication, or you have a de- you take a depression medication or a medication for epilepsy or something like that, you know, you, medication can interact with supplements as well. And people don't realize, but a lot of medications that, that, that pharmaceutical companies make are made with um, supplements. So you have to be careful because things can interact. And on our website, we talk about that, too, and we talk about fitness and beauty and uh, lots of other things. And it's, a, it's just a, a, it's a, a world full of information um, about all different types of things. And, you know, and we have um, probably information about every topic you can think of. Okay. Sounds interesting. Um, <clears throat> is there any other advice that you want to share with the audience? Um, you know, just like what I was saying right now, you know, um, we talk about a lot of different vitamins and supplements and how a lot of things can occur when your body is deficient of certain things, but you always have to make sure that, you know, you can take or do things and it's not going to interact with, you know, what medications you might have, you know, there's always precautions to take. And if you're not sure, always ask your doctor because, you know, everybody reacts differently. But, you know, we have a lot of information about a lot of natural things, you know, they, you know, people take dandelion to detoxify themselves. You know, they, a lot, you know, we're talking about the importance of detoxifying your body. There's things, you know, you can take, have tea and things like that. And, you know, when you're 
you're taking even herbal tea when you when you're drinking you know there's lots of different herbals you know even like they have lavender to make yourself you know relaxed and a lot of people use lavender and they like lavender but you always have to be careful you never know you know so always make sure when you're using something that it, it works well with your body absolutely and have any uh, ideas or suggestions, you know, sometimes, you know, there's so many things we try to, you know, we try to, you know, cover everything that we feel our audience is going to be interested in. And, you know, and also, you know, we talk a lot about, you know, chronic pain and, you know, different ways to deal with pain, because as you get older, like I mentioned, you know, a lot of people go through a lot of um, different types of pains in their bodies and, um uh, we uh, we talk about that too. So if people have questions about those type of things and they they just want to ask anything, feel free to just go on our contact board and just ask a question, and I will get back to you. Perfect, Stacy. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Senior Bulletin. Please subscribe to our podcast and enjoy more of our future guests as we discuss issues and topics that matter to seniors. Also. Be sure to visit our website at www.seniorbulletin.com. I'll talk to you on the next episode.